It's Tuesday on Your View. Welcome to the show. I am Morayo Afolabi Brown as always. I never do this alone. I have the ladies with me. Hello, Mariam. Hello. Good morning. I love the hair. Thank you. It looks, Thank you. I mean, this hair suits you. I think this is your best hair yeah, for me. I think so. It suits your stature, your height and all that. Thank you. Thank you, Mariah. How are you doing? Making me blush this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine. Today, we're going to talk about vultures. Ah, yes. yes. I haven't talked about my vultures in a while. So <laughs> I just want to remind everybody that vultures play a very important role in our environment. They are like the llama uh, mm -hmm. of Lagos. So they are like the llama of nature. Mm. They help keep our environment clean and protect us from diseases. So please don't kill them. Save them. Don't kill a vulture today, save a vulture today. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like this is a new orientation, yeah. honestly. <laughs> Where would I find a vulture to kill? I don't understand. <laughs> I, I hardly see them because we don't have cops. But people, you know, people have been reaching out to me since I started talking about these vultures. And they've been telling me, oh, I kill vultures. We used to kill vultures as really? children. Yeah. And people have even said to me that they know that they use them for rituals, that they're yeah. actually the most Sort of all yes, effective. effective for ritual. Wow. Yes. So we're saying, please let's look for that. There are rams, there are cows, there are goats. Let's try those. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doing amazing. So uh, someone sent me a message yesterday that um, he or she, I can't remember the, the sex of the person, that um, let me use he, was looking forward to my gratitude. So last year, December, I did a gratitude mm -hmm. challenge. Yes for the 31 days of uh, December ah. and said she was waiting to join me this time around and then he or she didn't see anything. Yeah. So, and actually I have a lot to be grateful for this 2020, but it kind of skipped me with everything yeah. that was going yeah. on. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just like, ah, no matter what you do, people are actually watching and paying attention. attention. So I'm definitely going to do it in January, yeah. so 2021, 31 days of uh, gratitude That's challenge. Like so start writing out things that you want to thank God for, mm. you're grateful for, for 31 Fantastic. days. We'll start in January. Yeah. But quickly, I have a shout out. Oh, yeah. um, one of our view fans from Canada uh, says today his son um, is having his birthday. His name is Jeffrey China. China Rekele. Uh, God be praised. Jeffrey yeah. China Rekele. Happy yeah. birthday, Jeffrey. Happy birthday, Jeffrey. Yeah. Happy birthday, Jeffrey. Happy birthday, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Happy birthday, Jeffrey. Jeffrey. Yeah. Kiri. Hi, Dean. I'm fine. Me too. I have a. Your only shout out. <laughs> How many do you have today? To please. Yeah. I have uh, just one. Um, it's um, the Lawal's their wedding anniversary, seventh wedding anniversary from wow. Alebio Shujoke Lawal to her husband, Abdulatif Lawal. Happy seventh anniversary. Wow. And I must shout out to Ayoba Fabrics for the box of goodies yes, that I got to yes. Thank them again, actually. You know, I go through a lot in the morning to get here just to see something like that mm. and then you put Pringle. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, you know, thank you so much. God bless you. And all of those thank people you. giving us gifts. So we are never pick up that gift on the island. Yeah. Thank you all so much. God I think Debo's. She said Debo's. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Or Debo's. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd like to thank especially All Large Interiors and Adam and Eve Luxury Homeware Store. Mm -hmm. They gave us our flower vases and flowers. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, they, make, you. they bring out the light, you know, yes. they brighten up our set yes. and we mm -hmm. say thank you. Thank Yesterday you. we had our first, our first show on, on mm -hmm. the physical set. We didn't really have any flowers. Mm -hmm. We had Christmas tree that yeah. was hand. So, <laughs> so we reached out to them and they were very, very gracious oh, to give us these God. gifts. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Adam so and Eve, yeah. thank you. Luxury homeware and all light interiors. Mm -hmm. They are close to the fact they are friends of the house. Okay. They helped us out also uh, in the past for other th things for our set. Okay, on that note. We go on a break. When we come back, we're excited to continue our conversation from yesterday. But first, we go through the front pages of the papers. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Okay, we're going to start with the nation. COVID-19 spike. FG slams five-week restrictions. Rush for NIN in Lagos, Abuja, and other states. Lawmakers raise budget 2021 estimates by 506 billion naira. Ulu of worry, Ogiame Ikeonli passes on. Asu Mum as Ngige raises hope of varsity reopening. House, of, house to probe 19.2 billion naira rail rehabilitation contract. 
Okay, let's start with the... Let me take Asu. Asu, okay. Okay, so um, <clears throat> Minister Chris Ngige has um, assured us Nigerians that um, academic um, um, activities will resume in January for public universities. But though, as we're saying, they can't say anything concerning that till after the meeting they are going to be having today. By the end of today, then they will give us, tell us what is going to happen forward. But uh, Chris, according to Chris Ngige, he said they've met like 98% of um, their uh, negotiations. negotiations and um, they've agreed to give them 70 billion, 40 billion for the allowances, 30 billion for revitalization and that's what they are working on. But and the remaining 2% is being worked on. Yes, so hopefully like by midnight today three, yeah, we should get something. Get, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so the House um, of Reps is looking, I said they will be looking into a 19.2 billion Naira um, contract that was awarded to a company called ESSA Contracting and Industry Company Incorporated. Um, they were given this award for railway rehabilitation contract in 2011 during the Good Luck Jonathan administration. The House of Minority Leader <coughs> Indudi Elumelu called the attention of his colleagues to this particular contract. Mm. He says that uh, while investigating, they found out that this the um, company was not registered, it had not met its um, tax clearance for three months, mm -hmm. so it did not even have the requirements to run a business, to carry mm -hmm. out any business Imagine. in Nigeria in the first place. Mm -hmm. So the House of Reps is definitely going to be investigating mm -hmm. this. Okay, let's take the major headline once for the COVID-19 spike, Nima Yaga's yeah. story. Yeah, I do. Want to take yes. it elsewhere? So yeah. We have new restrictions, um, although um, we don't have a lockdown, but a partial lockdown really. They've, you know, banned uh, large gatherings and weddings and all of that, strict enforcement of our face mask, enforcement of 24 to 4, 12 a.m. to 4 a.m. curfew. Um, mm. Churches and mosques and event centers should operate at least 50, not more than 50% capacity of um, event places, reduce crowding and a lot of that. Mm, mm, interesting. Yes, yeah, so, and they are saying that um, schools might resume January 18th, so that's on the federal government. I don't know if the states have agreed to this, but that's what the federal government is telling us. Let's move on now to Vanguard. COVID-19, Nigeria most flight ban as 40 nations cut off UK. Christian leaders ask about Leah Sheribu. Insecurity, Zulum blasts military over fresh abductions. Kankara schoolboys, they told us to say Boko Haram kidnapped us. Hmm. Oh, OAU, if a community trade worth over land encroachment. SIM registration, FG extends deadline for NIN by six weeks. No going back on Eastern Security Network and National Assembly passes 13.5 trillion Naira budget for 2021. Okay, I'm very interested in this Boko Haram story. Kankara, yes. Kankara boys. Yes. Yes. One of the boys that we were recently <coughs> released, while asked whether it was Boko Haram or bandits who kidnapped them, said they were not exactly Boko Haram because what they told them was to say Boko Haram kidnapped them under the uh, gang of one of the, you know, yes, Abu Kali, several, yes of uh, Boko Haram. That, but you know, he could not say particularly if they were bandits or you know, or they belonged to a particular uh, bandit group. But he was certain that they were not Boko Haram. They were just fe instructed to say Boko Haram and kidnapped. The child was certain that they were not Boko Haram. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Remember, we also took that story because on that Thursday, Boko Haram was doing a video mm -hmm. about the boys, the, al the alleged boys, and it's that same day that the boys were released. Mm -hmm. So we could see there was that there was there was there was like no correlation thing. between the video we saw in the morning. Mm -hmm. To the fact that the kids were able. so you know there's something what, fishy going on that we're not even sure what it is I yet. I believe the story is that you know in one of the reports according to the military at the time the last week or two, he, um, he was saying that they uh, you know they employ they employed the uh, assistance of local bandits mm. in groups to pick up these boys. Mm. So that made me wonder you know Boko Haram is not used to do that style right. now they're teaming up. Okay, yeah, we have, yeah, best, we have yeah, someone to answer to us, but let me take okay. the national identity story. Yes, yeah, so, yeah, so the federal government uh, yesterday has extended the synchronization of our national identity uh, numbers to our SIM card. So they have two categories of people, those ones who already have their NIN number. They have three weeks, so by, um, I think, January 19th. 19th, they will be rounding up that. Now, for those who do not have the NIN number as well, they have till February 9th to round that up and they are saying that uh, when you go for registration the COVID-19 protocols must be adhered to they should be social distancing mm. that's why they well, spread we took, it there are pictures in the papers yeah. about mm. all the I crowd saw that picture. and the NIN mm. offices yeah. exactly that so was you, before this announcement yes yeah, what did they think ahead because you, you, you're telling us exactly. COVID-19 is still here mm. you're telling us there's a new strain mm -hmm. yet you made this announcement all of us should go and rush and yeah. go and get our NIN before in two weeks time. what did you expect 
Awesome. <laughs> anyway, yeah, let's so go to one okay, second. Let's, yes, let's go to punch. Um, the gov okay, punch. Yeah, probably, sorry, probably punch. Probably, go ahead. I think. Okay, go so ahead. the governor of Borno State is blasting the military, really. He says he had gone to um, Jakana, one of the major towns along Maiduguri, Damaturu mm. Highway, and it was because of the latest abduct abduction of 30 people that uh, happened Friday. Mm -hmm. And he says that, uh, I just want to read out what he said, because on their way to visit the place, the particular place that was... Um, 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 attacked. It's called Auno and Jakana. It's like a 20 kilometer stretch. And he says that this happened consistently over, over two years. And if the military is unable to secure this 20 kilometer area, how are we sure that they're able mm. to secure us, you know, totally? And he says that um, with a majority of Boko Haram attacks hap happen along the Maiduguri, Damaturu, Kano Road. Keeps happening between Auno and Jakana. So if the military cannot secure 20 kilometers, how can they keep us with the hope they will defeat Boko Haram? Mm. We drove from Maiduguri to Jakana. We did not see soldiers on the road. Mm. This, we did not even see our own rapid response squad on this road. And they were trained, employed, kitted, and paid to protect all Nigerians within their areas of operation. And these Nigerians include travelers flying this busy and important road. Mm. He traveled this and he did not see anybody. Mm. Mm. I like that he's speaking <gasps> up. He said that I, I, I think we should also be truthful to ourselves. The landmass in the north. Do we even have enough hands? They should tell us the mm. truth. Yes. The landmass in the north. Mm. You know, you can walk kilometers and kilometers without seeing any living soul. They should tell us exactly if they need but more. Obviously, people. this is a conversation yeah. that has been going yeah. on. They need expect to that move people on, were supposed we're to wrapping be up. Here. We have the, the punch, NIN confusion. We talked about this panel still is not taking okay, National, uh, National Assembly jacks up budget by five hundred and six billion. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, yes, so while we were all distracted, they were debating on the appropriation bill already. Ah. And National Assembly has passed the 2021 appropriation bill, raising the amount to 13.9 trillion, an increase of about 500 billion. Um, the, you know, the breakdown of it is 13.59 trillion for 2021. We have five, five, 496 billion for statutory transfers. 3.3 trillion is for debt <laughs> service. Mm. 5.6 is for recurrent and uh, non-debt expenditure, while the sum of 4.13 is for 1.13 trillion is for capital expenditure. Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy that you know this debt service doesn't didn't look as bad as it did last mm. year. Well, it's, it's more than our capital. Yeah, it's yeah. still, it's still more. So <laughs> last year it was kind of scary. Are we done? Mm. Mm. We're done. We have to wrap up. Okay. Okay. That's all. Okay. There is story that yes. started, yeah, please. Sorry. So this particular person was um, Barak Bala was arrested in February. Of, um, 20th. 20th, 20th of February yes. and the court is asking that he should be released because um, he was alleged to have written blasphemous things against yes. Islam. Yes. So the court is asking that he be released because his um, fundamental human rights have been mm. infringed upon. Mm. I wasn't allowed to have his also also awarded, his release. Yes, yes, and okay. also awarded um, damages of two, up to 250,000. Wow, that's mm. good. Okay, unfortunately that's all we can take on front page review. When we come back in continuation of yesterday's topic, sending children to boarding school, is that the right choice? Stay with us, we'll be right back. Stay tuned, your view will be right back. their children to the boarding house are failures or they are not taking up responsibility mm. i think it would be unfair to parents people have different reasons for me i know how to play bond do everything with my children but when it comes to teaching them if that's me that has been a classroom teacher before mm. when it comes to teaching them i get very emotional and i don't give them the patience <coughs> to really come out and do their work so i knew that i could not handle their homework and um, classwork and projects so the best way so that they do not suffer academically is for me to send them to a boarding house. When they come home, that love, care that me, I know how to give. I cannot do everything. I will give them that. Mm. So it, for okay. me, it's just 50-50. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think, of course, there are pros and cons to um, a day, day, being a day student and also being a boarding house. And I went to boarding school. Unlike you, I cried my first few days at boarding school. I was not <laughs> excited to be independent. I mean, mm. it was university. I felt that way, but I was afraid to leave my mother's protection. Mm. And um, 
luckily, um, I think there was a, a senior who was supposed to sort of take care of me, although she was a day student. So I, maybe I had a little, it was a little easier for me to ease into it, but it wasn't the same for everyone. Mm -hmm. And that first few weeks, you're trying to get her to fetch water and wash your uniform and things like that. But the fact, all the things you mentioned, the bullying, the, um, would I say, sexual curiosity, mm. so those are the things that happen. Mm. And I would say this again, there is a lack of communication or a problem with communication between those who are, the adults who are meant to take care of you in the boarding house yeah. and the students themselves. They seem to be so on, uh, during my time, what you had the conversation mm. about. So you have someone who would go through issues. I remember a particular girl who um, uh, a teacher got into trouble because it seemed like he was writing her quite um, like intimate notes and it got him fired. But it happened for so long until her parents found out. Mm. No other teacher would was see able to that. See it. So that's what scares me. I'm not there. The adult that's supposed to be there is not paying attention. attention. That's what scares me about boarding house. You know, and also, yeah. let me just add one more. I think when you want to send your child to a boarding house, you need to pay attention to the sort of child that you have. Yes. I said important. this yesterday, like with my son, I do not think going to a boarding house straight up is the best for him because of his personality. I would rather do maybe day school for the first three years, first two years. He matures a bit. A yes, he is mature a bit. Well, you see, my daughter, I think she can handle this. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I mean, it's interesting how these were a product of those experiences. Yeah. Mm. Because I, I remember I almost grew up like an only child because mm. all my brothers had left the country before when I, when I was like two years old. So I grew up alone in my own house, new juniors. And so, maybe, so that we are all the product of what I experienced. Because yeah. even my husband uh, told me that somebody beat him up really, really bad. And his dad said, he came to school and just told the child that beat him up. This is keep quiet. <laughs> Say he goes home, eh? The, the beat. <laughs> See the tiny boy. Hey, beat that you. Beat you. Are you as good as, 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 as you are? And that's what that's what that was what started mm. his own aggression. Mm. That was letting for a long time where he was always angry. You know, beating beating his colleagues for a fight. Always ready for a fight. Yeah. So these are things, but you see, so, but just like you said, it's not bad, it's not good. Just how we do it. Now the question therefore is. How do we make boarding houses more effective mm. now, okay. and productive for question. children? Because they are good, uh, they are good, they are good, uh, good, good benefits, mm -hmm. and they are also negative. Yes. Also, so my best thing uh, to boarding school that had the freedom of choice for the kids. She, uh, I think, never did like that. She used to talk about some people being this students and boarding students be choosing to go home. Mm. So you can have you are a boarding student, but you can have a week where you just you notify school, your parents notify school, they come pick you. Yeah. You can leave school. Uh -huh. So that kind of arrangement, if it was possible in any of the schools today, I would consider boarding for my daughter, but not my son. Mm. Not because of I know his nature yet, but because I felt even under a monitored school, he's been abused in the past by his teacher. And mm. It's not something I'm willing to risk ever. But my daughter, she's my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> she's so, She's me. So if you want to try it, come. She's yeah. ready for it. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. uh, but for him, I, um, I would not want to risk it again. Mm. But if schools would have that freedom, because even the day school they go now, there's a time belt where you must come to school. And I don't ever support that. I want to be able to drive into school when I have the intuition. Mm. You know this thing? You can't do that. We no, actually no, 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 talked no. about yes. this yesterday. I, I disagree. No, Mariah, wait. Mm -hmm. you have ah, a dream. No, no, yes, no. you have a dream. You have a feeling. For every You have a dream. Let me explain my your child. Let me, no, let, me, let me explain this my son soon. I just had the feeling something wasn't right with my son. Mm -hmm. So for the entire three weeks, I noticed that thing. I would leave work here and go straight home. I would, once he comes back, I would take off his clothes. I would look at him very well. For, for finger scratch, for all of that, and I found them. Oh. I would question the school, and they'll be like, no, until they play the cameras. Mm. So, if you are a mother... And what did you see and, uh, uh, when they played the cameras? The, even they could not even use their mouth to narrate to me. Uh -huh. okay, you know, they just break, moved up to right. this. I mean, see, listen, you can't preach orderliness. You can't preach decorum. Mm. Uh, safety, above, safety above safety above death death okay, we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll talk about that after the break stay with <laughs> us we'll be right back. stay tuned your view will be right back
trying to stay with us. So we've agreed that there are pros and cons for actually boarding school or day students. But let's talk about how we can make boarding house more effective and more beneficial to the students there. Yeah. So for me, I think, um, you know, when we're a lot younger, our parents don't really have a relationship with the school. Mm. You know, just go, drop, pay the fees, drop your children till end of term and all of that. But now we are... More parents that are aware, we are more informed. And so we now build relationship with our teach, the teachers of our children, the school owners. We have a relationship. We can easily, I'm sure all of you have your, the heads of school for your yes. children. You have their numbers. Mm -hmm. So they should have an open door policy where parents can have an input in what is happening. I remember where I used to work. Parents can come in at any time. There's an open door policy. You walk in, you say you want to see your child. You may not necessarily speak to the child, but you can look into the classroom and see what's happening. Stay around and observe. You can go into the hostel and check his locker, make sure that he's adhering. That's a school, and people are trooping there with their children mm. because they've been able to build trust. When I'm picking schools for my children, I'm very particular about how the teachers or the school heads behave around me entering their environment. Mm. If they are very shady and no, you can't enter, no, you can't, I'm like, I will not be able to trust these people. There's so much going on mm -hmm. that they will not mm -hmm. let me know. But mm -hmm. if they are more open to you, can come in. I'm not a math person. Now. Why would I be going there every time? They <laughs> but there are some child. math parents. No, no, no. They, 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 they know parents. that you are now a math parent and they can tell you that you can't come all the time. But for every it's normal, like no, as a mother, it's you have those parents. instincts. You have those intuition mm -hmm. that something is happening. But you can't because you have child. a dream. No, no. Nah. You have come and disrupt my school activity. I will let you go. Because of a dream. I'm talking about children. I'm telling you. If you are a dreamer, please. You know, there's a mother that has dreams every other day. And they're constantly in the... Under the mountain, I and they are constantly seeing one vision. So those kind of mothers that are coming to destroy my school activity, you, this is wrong. Except something is very wrong with the child for you to be seeing that child in the dream every day. <laughs> it doesn't happen like that. If something is wrong with your child and you have that feeling, it's okay it's for you to be child. allowed to check on I your agree. child. Any school that refuses you to enter, that means they are shady about what is happening in that yeah. school environment. Oh. So an open door policy will likely okay, help I like, us I like that. I like yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, just also add to that, um, let me use an example. I remember my cousin, he went to a Christian secondary school, boarding school, mm. and he was horribly, horribly treated mm. by um, seniors. And um, the the, the, the school didn't really pay attention to it. It was just a particular time we went for visiting. The way he looked, oh disheveled, yeah. really dirty and whatever. We just knew something was up. And they had also accused him of some things. And you, you, know, you know your child now. You know what you raised. And then all of a sudden he turns. And when we found out, it was just all sorts of bullying. He just did not fit in there. And she moved him from that big school to a much smaller school. And he did so well there. So for... for, for for schools, boarding schools, I think if they are big schools, create smaller cells mm. that has um, like a matron, a school a therapist, a, a group, uh, you know, counselor. A, a, a counselor for that community. So they also know, like I think for my school, we used to have houses. So you have blue house, red house, mm -hmm. blah, blah, blah. But the um, teachers that were supposed to head were not so involved. So you mm. need maybe one or two more teachers who are involved that can even sit with the kids mm. and talk to so, them in the evening within the hostel, not talking at them because you know we, we know how to do that. Yeah. Tell you what to do, follow the rules, yeah. blah, blah, blah. But nobody's sitting with you and asking, so how far? You know, yeah, how are you yeah. doing? Yeah. What we need is emotional so that's Yes, we do. Those. We need that and create smaller communities within the boarding school for bigger schools. And if not for parents, I think try and look for the smaller schools. There are some yeah. small schools for your child. As a parent, try. you need to be very observant of your child too. If you visit school, just look beyond what you, the physical. Yeah, what they're saying. Try to notice. There was a day I visited school and I just went randomly out of work and I saw my child. I, I usually have this tiptoe behavior when I get to school because once this class was changed from the one that I could peep through the window, I started tiptoeing around the school. <laughs> so I tiptoed to the class door. She didn't notice I was there and I looked at my child sitting in a corner in the play group and all the other kids were playing and he was shivering. Oh my God. He came mm. not get fever. Oh my God. I told her, see, tomorrow me and that's child, we have something to do that. If it's not for, the day I see her, I just knew something was, the moment I spoke up and he saw me with them, I said, no, let me get you to your sister's class. He said, no, no mommy, you have to hold me. me. From oh. that day, I started checking that child. Mm. Well, so, are you talking about secondary so, school? How about daycare I'm, centers? Yeah, no, I'm talking about, hmm. uh, so imagine in a secondary school where the bullies are the ones in front and the boy just would not say. Well, okay, so. You should notice when he's not 
when he's not free to mm. say anything. Mm -hmm. so, okay, so we're talking about the children that are bullied. What are those who are bullied? Why are the bullies the themselves? Bullies themselves. Exactly. They also need counseling. Mm -hmm. They also yes. need to be talked to. Yes. Because they are also a product of their own family or whatever see, their relationship with their the parents. The teachers need to be more involved. You need to see the signs. You need to know who the bully is and who they are bullying. Most teachers do not understand that, do not know who is being bullied or do not know who the, those who are, um, who are the bullies themselves. Teachers need... Um, and um, teachers need training, not just on the teaching of the curriculum. Yeah. We need to talk about mental health and all mm. those things. Maryam, there's another, there's something I want to touch on because, I mean, back then, one of the reasons mm -hmm. why parents sent children to boys, we wanted your child to be shielded from all the demons and all the atrocities that go on in the, at, family. In, 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 in the family and even generally outside. So when you come on holidays, my mother would used to shield me from going to parties mm. or going out because she just felt that this is, I wanted to cage you. But honestly, Today, that, that, that doesn't really suffice anymore because people actually, children in boarding houses are they just as access. exposed. Yeah. They jump fence. They're just like, they jump fence. <laughs> they just like, so back the then, they like the fact that you were there, quiet, no, no parties, no boyfriends, mm -hmm. nobody coming to touch you, nobody. But now, it doesn't yeah. even happen. So, no, 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 our parents then were just naive. Because they did not see, they thought it didn't happen. happen. So they were shipped, shipped you off to school and thought, okay, good, you're locked up. So, this, so the point I was trying to school. drive is that day schools itself aren't that safe. Not at all. It's the day school because they, 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 have, have their, they, 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 they also have issues where your children have been totally exposed to the media. Yes. To security. Yeah, yeah. their children are exposed. With, if, if, it's it's even, if it's a mixed school, yeah. it's even, they, they, have, they have relationships. That's where it is. Yes, that's how it's And the problem was the people who would not listen. So in the day school I went, even when you were being bullied and you tried to report. Oh, my oh God. God. I remember in just to try to report to my teacher that somebody just stole my books and she should please help me lock, you know, and help us search. And I got a beating. Mm. for trying to report that my property was stolen. Mm. I put that mm. teacher's name mm. in my left hand. May I quickly, okay, we have okay. to wrap up on this. Right. But the truth mm -hmm. is that I think going forward, we need an expert. Mm -hmm. yeah. We need to invite now. We've, we've aired our own views on this. Mm -hmm. and we've listened, we, did we take any tweets at all? No, no we didn't. We didn't. I have a few so tweets. So, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Girl says, when I was in boarding school, my dad had a bad feeling I wasn't okay and was restless. He had to visit me. Thank God he came. I was so sick. When he arrived, I was getting moved to a general hospital, so he drove after the ambulance. And stayed with me throughout the hospital. Um, I, I am strong, she says. While I'm for mama, we no get intuition. No. Intuition, <laughs> qua. If you are so filled with intuition, I bet keep your picking as day students. Imagine every parent coming to check on their words at different times because of intuition. Is that still the boarding school? Ayotunde wow. Odueko says, boarding house is the best to bring up a child. The child will learn how to survive in this tough world. Mm. Homosexuality, bullying, etc. has always existed in the society. Close communication is exposing them more. Mm. Let your home be good. It will show in the child. The child. Mm. Um, Soraya says, parents' hunches are very important. Yes. If a parent insists on seeing a child, Please. calling out the child to the school reception wouldn't disrupt any Thank school you. activities. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think, that, I think that, that this one, this part of the conversation is a hot topic. Mm. Because I totally disagree. Mm -hmm. But, you know, this is a conversation we'll have another day. We have to wrap up. As I said, we've read our views. Mm -hmm. We'll bring in an expert. You want to say something? I'm an expert, too, okay. in education. So <laughs> I, I wanted to say that, um, you know, teachers should be trained beyond just the academics. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, some schools, because they are trying to gather as much money as they can, mm. do not invest in training these teachers. So in the whole hostel, okay. you may not even have a teacher who is equipped to offer advice or offer therapy. And, and so they just do their classwork mm. and they ignore the other aspects. So even if you cannot get someone you pay, you can bring in consultants who will come in from time to time and have like a relationship with the Workshop. children, mm. ask them questions, mm. get to know how they feel and what they feel. Yeah. And right. it's every teacher's yeah. job to observe That's the right. children in your class. Yeah, you are very correct. Very Learning is beyond cognitive skills. Yeah, you have is. to learn how yeah. to um, do other things. On that note, we have to wrap up. But as I said, we're bringing an expert who can better explain to us how best to make use of the boarding houses and even day schools so that parents can ensure that their children are safe in all, um, in all sectors of um, society. That's all we can take on this. When we come back, we move on to the next topic. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Your view will be right back. Thanks for staying with us. So we're discussing food handling during this season, especially um, the second wave 
of COVID-19 is, 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 is upon us and a lot of people will be going out to eat and drink in places. The question therefore is how do we avoid food contamination and poisoning so as to stay safe uh, during this period? Um, and I'd like to also link that up with our conversation with the, with the boarding house because the kids are in boarding houses and many of them are coming home now. But um, how do we even ensure that for food safety in, the, in these schools? Join us on the show is a food safety expert, Mr. Sunday Bangbushi. Welcome to the show, sir. Welcome, Good sir. Good, Good to morning. have you. Right. You can call us on 90 You can also tweet to us at TV Second Peace hashtag TV so we can read your tweets. All right, so. We'll discuss COVID in a moment, but we're talking about children, boarding house and all that. In your view, how best do we ensure food safety, especially when your children are concerned, both at home and in boarding houses? Uh, well, let me start you know, uh, by identifying what are the risks. When you talk of food safety, we are looking at three different areas where you can have issues. Is either you have issue with biological, chemical, or physical. Uh, if you are talking of biological, you are talking of you know a problem coming from microorganism infecting the food. Uh, if you are call, talking about chemicals, you know mistakenly, you know adding chemicals, it may, food be, you know, it may not be it may not be adding. You may use container that may have been used uh, before, you know, to store chemical. Then you now use the same to store food items. Maybe mm. your palm oil, mm. your mm. vegetable oil. Uh, I'm sure you must have had some cases where they say a family of three or five, you know, they took a, a meal or their dinner and then. By next morning, he said they are all dead. Mm. Uh, it's not impossible that something like that may have happened. Mm. And then we talk of the physical. When you talk of physical, you know, uh, contamination, that is when you talk of, you know, um, maybe something like a pain, uh, step, uh, stapler pain, um, nails. Nails may even be so obvious, you may not, but something that maybe you, on glass particles, mm. you know, in, for example, sometimes you open your bottle drink and you see that, you know, okay. part of the uh, tip has already chipped, chipped off. off. It may go into the drink. And, so those are the various areas where risk comes in. Now, if we want to look at it, uh, maybe at home or in the body house or even eatery or wherever. Um, one of the major ones that you likely have will be um, biological food contamination coming from microorganisms. And what are the causes? What can cause this? For example, if you use a uh, chopping board, that you use for your raw food, you, are, uh, you allow contact with cooked food. That may be a problem. Mm. Yes. Uh, if you store raw food with cooked food, uh, you may have a problem. Because, you know, the, uh, the process of cooking, you inactivate or kill the microorganisms. But in uh, raw food, um, the micro are very active. Mm -hmm. And when you know, there is a cross-contamination from the raw food to the, uh, to the cooked one, you remember that these are microorganisms that you cannot even see. Mm -hmm. So it's not a matter of, oh, even if I, I, I you know, Sometimes it's not even what you just, you know, oh, uh, uh, and you think, yeah. you know. No, no, but let's, this, this thing you just talk about, you because all of us, we, are, we keep we are, we are food, therefore I put it in the freezer, and maybe there's a, some meat I have not boiled, and we just everything just packed together. Can it contaminate each other? So I put the, maybe the raw food yeah. on top of it, yeah. and yeah. the plastic is packed. Can it, it can't contaminate each other. Well, you see, um, every situation 
you assess the risk. For example, if you know the food is packed uh, and sealed. sealed, that reduces the chance okay. of that contamination okay. happening. Uh, but in most cases, you see, ah, because this is inside the fridge, this is inside the, so I can just lump everything together. together. You know, the essence of you know, this type of conversation. Uh, conversation is that it's, you have that consciousness. Right. Yeah. So every time you want to do something, you mm. look at ah, what are the risks I'm um, yeah. you know, yeah. taking here. Right. So with that, for example, now, now you say you want to store your effort and you still want to store your cooked food. Right. You now know that, ah, okay, now I, know. Uh, now mm -hmm. I need to do extra sealing okay. right. or whatever. So right. we're in the season of um, eating a lot. <laughs> and these takeaway plates are, you know, they come in handy. You don't want to eat at the party, but you can take it some home. How do we ensure that there is no co a chemical contamination in new plates? You, you know, they come part in hundreds. And we don't and people wash. just keep, you know, they just take a uh, few lands. Even in Nitris, you know, they do it fast, fast, fast food. They do everything fast with such speed that you don't know why you're taking on a chemical, you know, poison food. Well, um, in a normal setting, except something has gone terribly wrong, uh, those takeaway packs are supposed to be, you know, uh, they are non-reusable. I mean, as a, it's not something that oh, somebody have used, and uh, so you are supposed to just take and you know use. One, if it is designed for food, that means the composition is such that can you know uh, contain the food and keep it safe. So the area of concern now for such part is how do, you, how do you store them before use? Mm. So if you store them in such a way that, you know, it's exposed, especially maybe to rats. rodents, mm. infestation rats, and then, you know, uh, uh, rats uh, droppings and all those things can, you know, uh, enter into those, that's where the, the okay. problem comes in. But if it is well, you know, store. So you're saying from factory is safe to use yes, straight? Yes, from, if it's from the factory, it is well handled in the shop and then to your, you know, the only, the only concern should just be, okay, because you don't know all through the value chain. Mm. Uh, the, mm. Yeah, the, okay. The mode. Uh, yeah. That's only should be the concern. Okay, you know, uh, sometimes you have a bottle of granite mm. and then you want to use it either to drink Gary or to make soup and it breaks. But you don't want to lose the ground nuts, nuts. <laughs> the peanuts. So you pick and pick and pick, and you're trying to avoid those uh, it's bottles, specs, specs. Is it safe to, if you can, pick it properly that you don't have those specs, or you just abandon the whole thing? Is it thing? dangerous even it to it's, consume bottles? Yeah. Because it, that, that is a speck of bottles. Is that, is that even dangerous? Mm -hmm. Well, um, if in that scenario, hmm, what I will advise is that you just dispose. How much is a bottle of granite from that to There are some really yeah. nice yeah. granite that is very <laughs> dry. dry. You don't want to lose it. But <laughs> God, God forbid, if you take a tiny piece of glass, glass uh -huh. in, mm. yes. 3,000 cannot solve that problem. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Are you sure we've not eaten glass so before? Are you sure we've not eaten glass Glass in Somehow. this country. You know, all of us at some point, we have to think it too. See, you know, you know. Because they will use Eba. Eba will push it down. Push it down. No, 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 no. And you are good to do Please. it. Uh, let me say this. There are so many risks mm -hmm. that we've taken in the past. For example, um, there's possibility that, okay, maybe you may not even notice. No. But uh, what of, maybe this is an incident that's happened to 10 people. And then one unlucky person out of that thing, that tiny uh, glass, glass when it goes somewhere inside the throat and then causes internal bleeding along the, the gorge. That so that is the danger. And mm -hmm. you know, the way uh, we 
in the industry or the food safety expert look at it is that if there is a chance of even one in one million or ten million, you know, uh, uh, getting injured or dying from mm. consuming the food, then uh, the fact that that probability is there, mm. then you mm. want to prevent it, it. Okay. because you can't let be sure. Go, let me go on a quick break. When we come back, we we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> So we still have our guest with us. Yes, Mariam had a question yes. for the So in Nigeria, you know we handle food with our hands. We mm -hmm. like to eat with our hands. You go to a party, there's a tray, everybody picks up with their hands. How do you do that and still be safe without coming across, ah, this one is feeling, what is this one feeling like? Because she wants to use a fork, a fork. or she wants to use a toothpick. But how do you still maintain cultural practices oh, and still be safe? <laughs> Thank you. Well, um, <laughs> that's a very tough one. <laughs> uh, because you can control what you know you do with your you can make sure before you touch food and whatever you you know uh, clear your hand but you cannot control what other yes, will do hands have been. Mm -hmm. and we have. Uh, generally for uh, you know for you you just have to be observant uh, for example, if they are serving something in a tray, mm -hmm. right? Um, if it is just to pick, and uh, but if you know it's a matter of do I you mm -hmm. have to go through and select? Then for 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 cake, um, uh, I mean I've been to parties where yeah. they pass and I do eat them, but you know um, except. For somebody that, that is, that high, yeah. uh, except for somebody that is so greedy, mm -hmm. I don't see any reason why somebody would have to be searching inside a tree. Okay, for, okay uh, I get your point, but you see, there's, a, there's some other examples that, because me, I'm, 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 a, I'm a plantain chips addict. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, that's my favorite snack. Mm -hmm. But there was a day I saw a guy that sells plantain chips. He put his goods down. He went to pee. And, and he held hand. Ah. He held his something was peeing. You know, dangled that, put it back in. <laughs> And then carry the plantain chips. <laughs> and went right back to the road. I'm like, you don't see the oh, that yeah, yeah dig it. So, so I, when I buy it, sometimes I just have to spray the, <laughs> <laughs> spray the pack. But you see, these are things you do all the time. But the question, therefore, is that are some of these germs good for us? Mm -hmm. I mean, because we can't really protect ourselves. Even from the all germs. Germs. I mean, there's some of so the, the, the part of the thing that make us healthy at least protect us from COVID-19. That was saving Nigeria. Well, that was saving Nigeria from COVID-19 today. Well, uh, I wouldn't say that's what is saving. You know, um, yes, because of our, of our environment, we may have developed, you know, a immunity. sort of, uh, mm -hmm. not, I wouldn't say immunity, but sort of resistance, resistance yeah. to some of, you know, uh, these things because we've been exposed to them. So the body, you know, uh, defense mechanism may actually be helping. Uh, but, you know, we should not put our, uh, push our luck too far. Mm. Uh, we still need to do what we need to do. For example, uh, if you are not aware, it's a different thing. Uh, you may decide, okay, I will be buying my plantain chips from an outlet we are um, sure mm -hmm. you know you can ask questions like maybe supermarket, supermarket uh, uh, who are the people oh, no, the you know but you know uh, you can't be too sure but mm -hmm. at least you have to be you know as careful as you mm. can. Okay. Uh, Let's talk yeah. about seasoning. You know, this is the period where they are cooking and all the foods are just oh, tasting. Uh, ishi, ishi. So, you go and um, how do I call it? Now, how do I say it? There's, no say. There's the white one. MSG. There's the normal one. Mm. And our oh, mothers used to say the white one is the one that can poison you. I'm talking of food seasoning yeah. now. Mm. The white one can poison you. You know, they don't... And it's the one that makes food very like, sweet. And that one makes me sweet. So, how, which seasoning? Will you, or should we even use seasoning at all? 
Or, uh, I'm not for mayor, sir. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but which <laughs> one? You know? Okay, let me. Uh, in fact, I think it's a very good opportunity to address this. Okay. Ah, thank um, you. I've heard this. Oh, uh, I don't want to mention any brand, brand, brand name. Yeah. That the white, uh, this thing is uh, bad. This one is. Now, if you, if you look at the history, that white one is called MSG, uh, monosodium glutamate. And if you look at even the cube one, the other mm -hmm. one, they still contain that MSG. MSG. Yep. And when you look at there is uh, what is called Codex Alimentarius Commission. That's the war body that is, you know, um, in charge of uh, food additives and the rest of it. Uh, monosodium glutamate is classified as grass. Grass means generally regarded as safe. So, um, you know, for everything in this world, even water, moderation is the key word. Okay. So, when you use it, in fact, those things are even self-limiting because when you put too much, you wouldn't know you can you, cook you, it. Uh, you won't the it, you know the taste you won't the hair. Mm -hmm. so it's a matter of using all these things in moderation so, so, so fact, unfortunately we have to wrap up right no now. I, I, there's no issue I've, oh. I've, I've, I've even seen some uh, scientists argue mm -hmm. but I've read about this thing and uh, what they complain about some people who what they call um, uh, Japanese uh, syndrome people mm -hmm. that you know go to um, Japanese restaurants right. because this is something that right. is very right. common with them. And they were thinking that, oh, it is, you know, because of the monosodium glutamate. Right. But there was an experiment done, and they discovered the that... The point is that we have to wrap to up, unfortunately, but I do appreciate you. Thank you Thank very you, much. Sir. And this yeah. helped us to clear that up for yes. the MSG. So it's not like it's unsafe. You can use it. Uh, but it just have to be in moderation. Thank okay. you very much, sir. We're going to go on a very quick break because we need to discuss this NIN issue. Okay. Everybody's talking about it, and it, there's a lot of crowd out there. So we need an update from the government on exactly what should be done and what has been done. Stay with us. We'll be right back. NTBC, actually. Stay tuned. To stay with us. So before we close the show, it was important for us to have a conversation with Dr. Chinwe Ocho, who is the uh, Prevention Program and Knowledge Management Department um, uh, um, head um, right there to give us an update on, on, the, on the government's directives, especially now that COVID, the second wave is upon us. Dr. Chinwe Ocho, are you there? Yes. Thank you yes. very much for having me. Yes. Oh. Thank you for joining us. So very quickly, Madam, could you just give us a, a summary of what the new directives are? and um, how best we can begin to adhere to these new directives. Okay, we want Nigerians to know that um, we are having increasing number of cases of COVID-19 in the country. We have a respite, but the numbers have started rising. And this is um, mostly as a result of widespread um, and lack of adherence to COVID-19 protocols. We are also at a point uh, very close to um, a festivity, a very popular one that will mean a lot of people will, may have to travel. There will be a lot of social gatherings here and there. So our advice uh, to Nigerians is if you don't have to travel, please don't travel. Let's avoid non-essential travels because um, more, the more we call, have come in contact with people, we have large gatherings, people moving from one place to the other, the higher the risk of transmitting the virus. So if you don't have to travel, please don't travel. And if you must travel, uh, make sure you adhere to these uh, protocols. Keep a distance from the other person next to you of a, a minimum distance of about one meter, especially if you're wearing your face mask. Ensure you wear a face mask properly covering your nose and your mouth as you leave your house. Maintain good hand and respiratory hygiene. Wash your hands frequently with soap under running water. 
as you travel and you get home, please try to celebrate among your own family members. Don't, this is not the time to really uh, visit the neighbor, do this or that. And if you must do that, please make sure you wear your face mask and you keep that distance from the other person that will make it difficult for whatever is coming from the respiratory tract of that person to get to you. Remember that in the villages where people are going to now, that is the, that's where we have most of the high risk um, persons like the elderly and those with comorbidities. So people that are asymptomatic that travel to home to the village to celebrate with their loved ones have that tendency right. of being able to transmit the virus to those that are at high risk of having the severe forms or even dying from it. So we have to be very, very careful and ensure that uh, as we are celebrating, we are celebrating safely. So let's right, avoid gatherings. And if you must have meeting or the other, try to meet in open spaces where there is good yeah. ventilation. Right, Dr. Ocho, could Make you sure that you have pressure. Dr. Ocho, could you please confirm to us this new strain we're reading about? Is that true? Is there a new strain? And if there is, what are the characteristics of this new uh, trait and how do we prevent ourselves from, from, from catching it or contracting it? Research um, is, has shown us that there are some emerging strains um, in UK, it's been discovered in UK and the other countries. Even in Nigeria, we have demonstrated a very minimal number of uh, that strain in the country but a lot is still unknown about that strain. So a lot of scientific research is going on uh, to understand whether that new strain poses any higher risk of transmission uh, and whether it is uh, associated with more severe forms of the, uh, of the disease. So there's still a lot that we don't know about that new strain. And that is why we are advising that we continue to try to protect ourselves from even getting the virus, whatever strain it is, all these uh, social measures, public health and social measures, um, non-pharmaceutical interventions of physical distancing, proper hand hygiene, proper respiratory hygiene, avoiding large gatherings, maintaining that distance of about two meters, or where that is not possible, at least one meter from the other person, is still able to keep us from whatever strain of the virus is out there in the community. Okay. Dr. Ochu, I have one more question for you. Is, is there a smooth communication between NCDC and other federal agencies? Because one second NIN is telling us, uh, NCC is telling us we have to go and get our NIN numbers before we shut down at the end of the year. And then we see this huge crowd. So you're telling us not to go out to and maintain social distancing. But are you telling your colleagues in the federal government the same thing? Because they make these announcements and I just troop out and then it causes the spread of this virus. Hmm. Well, our, our message has been the same right from the beginning of this response, and we work very closely with other government agencies. What we launched against the COVID-19 was a multi-sectoral response. So, and the, 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 the protocol is very clear. We don't encourage large gatherings of any form at this time, especially now that we are very close to a second wave. We've already started climbing the steepest slope of another wave. So we, and where people must, you know, meet in large numbers, so to say, then there must be um, things put in place to ensure that there's that distance between one person and the other. And also, we can start that kind of registration can be staggered so that all the people don't have to come to um, that particular place at the same time. So there are ways we can get about this and still continue to run our society uh, without, um, exposing ourselves to unnecessary risk. All right. Thank you very much, madam. Uh, we appreciate it. Sorry we had to bring you up very quickly, but it was important for us to get the facts from you to be sure what the next steps are. But thank you very much for clarifying that for us. Okay. We'll be speaking with thank the you for having me. Prevention of Program and Pro Knowledge mm -hmm. Management and Management of Department of NCDC, Dr. Chingwe Ochu. That's all we can take, ladies, on the show. Have a fabulous <laughs> day. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye for now.